Jed Wood, welcome to today's episode of Coffee Break. And today I'm here in on Parramatta Road and uh, with Lyndall, who is artist in residence for the Leichhardt Council. Parramatta Road is a curious mix of snowy bridal shops, decaying milk bars and ubiquitous car yards. Together they form a living museum of Greater Sydney, its affluence, issues and heritage. Lindell Irons documents street scenes and businesses to preserve an important place perpetually threatened by change. So I have moved in here at number 121 Parramatta Road, Annandale, for the month of September, a few days a week. Um, I've been working on a long-term documentary photography series about Parramatta Road, so it's pretty special to be a resident on, on the road itself and have my own shop. <laughs> and I'm showing some work here and meeting a lot of the people around the neighbourhood. This residency is part of Leichhardt Fringe, which is part of Sydney Fringe Festival. It's, and it's called Parramatta Road Goes Pop. I was selected because my work's very relevant to this area, I think. Um, a lot of the pictures that are here at the moment have been taken very close to this premises itself. And uh, this gives me an opportunity to really focus on it, this one, uh, this couple of blocks in this area and to make sure that Leichhardt's covered in my series. I am a photographer and this is one of my photographs. I call it Friday afternoon at Dog Groomers Inner West because that's what it was and when it was taken. Um, it's moved on now. I think it's somewhere still in Petersham. It closed for a little while, but I think it's moved further up towards this way, actually. But I'm not sure of the exact address. It's just a Friday afternoon at a dog washing place, which is pretty much what I do. I turn up to places that you might not think uh, anything's going on, or you might not think to photograph or document, but there are moments there, and sometimes things happen. All of these are from the beginning of my work on this series, um, which I started around 2010, 2011. Um, so it's a long-term series, and it will probably go on for quite a long time. But I'm working towards an exhibition, a solo exhibition next year in 2016, around May or June. In these two, we're looking at a tattoo parlor called House of Pain, uh, which was in Annandale on Parramatta Road a bit further down. That's also closed now, so you know, I'm interested in preserving places. There's, businesses are constantly changing on Parramatta Road, and yeah, so part of my motivation is to preserve things that are changing all the time. These were some backpackers, I think, who were there just getting tattoos that day. It was my birthday a few years ago. I didn't really want to get out of bed that much, but um, it turns out there were photos out there that day, so I'm glad I did. Um, I really especially like some of the tattoo options on the wall, which aren't tattoos that I would choose to get myself. So this is the Franks building a few years ago, back when there was a lot of construction going on about it. That was taken through a bus window. Um, now all the buildings are up and, you know, it's midday now, so there's no nice sunset. But it was it's just a simple shot, but it shows how the area is changing over the years. Um, this is the Latin dance school that's pretty close by. And I really like showing work around the place that photographs were made. 
I think it really creates a really nice geographic tie to the pictures and gives them a reason for being put up. Um, that's a really amazing shop. I still would like to go back and photograph their business again because it's just, there's a lot of incredible people around and a really amazingly decorated building. This is Parramatta Road Homebush at Carcel, which was a car yard. Parramatta Road's pretty famous for car yards, so I wanted to try and document as many of those as I can. Uh, ones like this one again have now vanished and there's a massive development going up around that, that area at the moment, so uh, I'm glad I got that one too, especially with some of the interesting marketing methods that people have with cars on top of containers and um, hand-painted signs, things like that, that will become increasingly in decline. I don't really know what to say about this one. I just like the lines, um, the tattered lines and, or awnings and the way it worked with the, the fence. This was taken not very far away at all at pretty much diagonal from here across Johnston Street. This is a guy called Daz and his cat Karma. I like the view outside um, the window because you don't often get to see residential windows and that perspective on Parramatta Road. So it was a privilege to be able to go and visit his house. He ran, used to run a pole dancing school downstairs and yeah, but that was one of the quieter moments of his life. And it was great because his wife ended up in another series of mine later on, which um, I love connections like that. I also really love specialty shops. I, um, the more specialised, the better. And this one is another specialty shop because it just sells double bases and double base accessories. And down here, this guy just sells stockings. This is a burger business that was near West Street in Petersham, Lewisham Way. This is Nikki Webster's dance school, which is I think, called Dance at Nikki Webster, which used to be just up the road there, that direction, I believe. But now it's moved further into Leichhardt and off Parramatta Road. But um, I found a lot of interesting musicians on Parramatta Road that you wouldn't expect to. There's a lot of celebrities. These are shot on black and white film, which I, when I first started the series, I shot a lot on black and white film, just trying to find the right look to the series. But the more I moved indoors, the more I needed to go digital and the more color became important. So I don't really shoot film or black and white anymore. But there's a few from the era that I still really like. Um, like Trusted Dealer, another one of the car yards. All the, one thing that's been really interesting to me is that all the car salesmen are really, really different. And I've tried to categorize as many of them as possible. So he was a good find. And this is taken just a few doors down from where we are at the moment at the news agency. And it's a really simple photograph, but a lot of these things will become historically interesting with all the newspapers and news and magazines. Plus this guy who's, I don't know his name, but he's a real feature of the street. He's always, always out around smoking and he's important to have in a photograph somewhere. This shop is no longer around, but I just like the contrast between the mannequins and the guy running. Um, and possibly not around anymore because wedding packages from $600 might need to be a bit more expensive. Yeah. And these two were taken, this was again not very far away, just a simple shot in the rain. Sometimes when it's raining you don't feel like going out to do photography or it's easy to make excuses not to, but Parramatta Road's pretty amazing when it rains. It's, it's not great drainage, you get massive puddles, it's a really nice soft light and um, yeah, interesting moments do happen. And this is just taken from the overpass around Petersham. I try to get pictures of the road itself as well as the traffic and the people on the road to uh, a residential business people. <laughs>
Yeah, it's quite topical. You find it in the news a lot at the moment. With West Connects is always on the political agenda. What's West Connects? It's looking to both develop and revitalise potentially Parramatta Road. Looking at, I, mean, I think most people agree that there's some issues with Parramatta Road concerning traffic and um, congestion. I know, and see in the background on the soundtrack, you can hear how noisy it is here. Mm. It's just... So, over the years, many, a great many different governments and councils have tried to come up with solutions of how to fix this road. But um, this is one of the ones that seems to be getting more traction for better or for worse. Some people think this could be a very bad thing. Some people yeah. give it some support. So, or are very keen to see this addressed at least in some form. I know because the building levels are going up and up and up, aren't they? Mm. At the moment, the highest, the tallest building along Parramatta Road here at Annandale would be three storeys. But I think with the redevelopment, they're going much, much higher. Mm, and they're also, I mean, it's still changing shape the way that they're, they're wanting to make Parramatta Road a lot more residential and they're talking about okay. a great many more people living here. Um, but those numbers keep moving up and down. They haven't really stabilised or at this stage been set in concrete. So. Yeah. Well, they call it progress. I'm not too sure <laughs> that it's for the better, but anyway. Well, I'm, I'm a really big fan of Parramatta Road as it is at the moment. Um, because I don't drive on it that much. It makes me late for a, a couple of family events sometimes, but um, <laughs> I really I don't mind being stuck in traffic because sometimes a photograph might happen out the window or... <laughs> <laughs> okay, now see, Parramatta Road has a history that dates back to colonial times. And I'm absolutely gobsmacked by the thought that if you are in your early 50s now, your mm -hmm. lifespan is a quarter of white Australian history. And as Australians, we don't appreciate how fabulous our history is. I had a German man point out to me, he said, you Australians don't appreciate it. You've got everything. You've got Aboriginal culture. You've got convicts. You've got explorers. You've got all this stuff that no other country has. And it's such an expanse. So Parramatta, goes, Parramatta Road dates back to the very, very early days of the colony. Mm, some call it our first intersettlement road. So it's, and before that it did have an Indigenous history um, with a waterway that was followed. And yeah, there were bush ranges out here. There used to be a real sense of journey on this road and that's what I'm interested in recovering. Not looking at it as just a a road used for transit, but a road that could be used for journey as well. I know. I mean, I wonder how long it took in the olden days to go by coach from Sydney town to Parramatta. It took yeah. hours. Yeah, well, my grandparents used to have holidays in Parramatta and <laughs> camp by the Parramatta River, so... <laughs> really? <laughs> Ooh. And this is another of my projects. It's a book, and it was an exhibition called Goodbye Oxford Tavern. And it's about a, the last 48 hours of the Oxford Tavern in Petersham before it closed as a topless bar. It was a place that I think was a bit underrated, like Parramatta Road. Um, it had a really long history. I've included some of the advertisements um, that it's had over the years in the book as well. I think it was a topless establishment for about 30 years at least. And so, and I live in Petersham, so it was an important for me to get some sort of document of it before it closed. So, some of the neon signage. Then I also collected some of the stories of people who returned there or still worked there at the time, including this is Mandy, who ran Sex Bomb Promotion, still does. Um, it's a family business and they booked a lot of the girls who used to dance there so I collected her story and a lot of the dancers on the night. These photographs were taken in 2013 and I'm taking them to Melbourne very soon for a solo show there as well. It's a lot different now. The Oxford Tavern reopened but so it's still in operation as a bar but it's a totally different establishment now. Um, Nobody takes the clothes off that I've seen. Um, and it's a bit more of a conventional pub. <laughs> but what I was surprised about 
in shooting this work was the community that you see at the Oxford as well. Um, it was the people there were really family a lot of the, to a lot of the other people there, and it was it was didn't really it wasn't really known as having a community feel like that. But a lot of the girls who learnt, learnt to dance there worked regularly there before they'd go work other shifts, and yeah, it was there were some pretty spectacular performances. This is Derek, a regular, and I think a lot of the patrons there were just as important as the girls who were famous for dancing there as well. He used to do the crossword there, and some people called it his office. This is one of the performances from the final night of performances where about, there were queues all up and down the street. It was packed, there was, it was sold out, people were getting turned away, and yeah. I think if it was always like that, maybe it could have stayed open. Mm. This is a photograph of Harley, who was the MC, one of the MCs at the Oxford Tavern. And he, he's just had a really amazing story. He used to be on Home and Away for a little while. He used to do karaoke down the road at the Newington. And his grandfather was the first MC at the Oxford Tavern when it opened as that kind of establishment. Um, so it was. Pretty amazing that he was the last one there and his grandfather was the first, but his grandfather used to do it in drag, so. Oh, that's Maurice. Yeah. Everybody knows Maurice. Yes, he was, in, he was for a long time at the Johnson Street intersection of Farmata Road. That was around, this is what taken around Christmas time, obviously, and yeah. He cleans windscreens. Yeah, I think he's now working closer to Piedmont Way. I've seen him around there a bit. Yeah, he, he was, um, um, I don't know if he was arrested, but the police forbid him to work on the Johnson Street Road. Mm. And the last time I saw him, he was wearing a suit, standing at that intersection, and he was so excited because he had won the case and he was allowed back to clean the windscreens. He was the most funny, lovely man. As brush of furniture. Another one from the Salsa School nearby. This was at Concord Wash and Wax Car Wash, Soft Car Wash. Uh, this was in the Sydney Life Competition in Hyde Park one year. I was actually trying to shoot Mother's Day at the florist down the road and it's really hectic there and I'm sure there'd be some sort of photograph there. But I wasn't really happy with anything I took even though I stayed there for hours and hours and hours. But then on the way home I came across these guys and yeah, I got that shot instead. This is at the Chinese medical place down the road. Don't tell me what's wrong with you, because I'll look at you and, and tell you, and it's a long name. <laughs> this is one of my favorite places, RE Motors in Granville, one of the most iconic places on Parramatta Road, as it's got the mannequin out the front called Fiona, who's been there for very many years, a great many years. There's various Fiona's have cropped up and I try to document quite a few of them if I can. This was quite a sultry Fiona. <laughs> so Linda, people think that history is something that happened ages and ages ago, but actually it's happening all the time, isn't it? Like the, the redevelopment of Parramatta Road, here we are in Annandale. If we were to come back in a year's time, it would probably look totally, totally different because of all the development applications that are in. So I think it's really important that we do document our local history. So these photographs that you've taken in a hundred years will be very evocative of what life was like in Annandale in the year 2015. So I think it's very important work. And, um, Thank you for being on today's program 
And if anyone would like to find out more about your book or your work, what would they do? I have a website, which is lindolions.com.au. And there you can see examples of my work, my email address. If you'd like to get in contact, um, give me leads on things to shoot on Parramatta Road, I'd be <laughs> I'd love you to go and photograph that the uh, shop across the road. It's like a milk bar that's left over from oh, 50 years ago. Do you know anything about it? Yes, that's my favourite part of Parramatta Road, the Olympia Milk Bar. The Olympia Milk Bar. A lot of people's favourite part of Parramatta Road is the Olympia Milk Bar. And so it's also been really great that my residency is right across the road from the Olympia. Um, he doesn't, he's a very private guy. He doesn't like photographers and he doesn't like being photographed. So I feel pretty lucky that we have a, a friendly relationship of me going over there to drink coffee. And, so he's um, still open for business. Still open for business. <laughs> he must have changed the decor for about 50 years. Yeah, and that's why it's, it's quite an experience going in there. Um, and it's a really unique place to Sydney, kind of place that yeah, should be valued, even if he doesn't really want us going in there all the time. I know. So your pop art exhibition here is at 121 Parramatta Road, Annandale, and the Olympia Cafe is directly across the road. And see, the thing about the milk bar is that that must be one of the last ones left in Sydney. Mm. And I mean, the milk bar was the focus of the community. You know, everybody used to meet at the milk bar after they'd been to the pictures or whatever. So it's very much a, um, a, a time capsule of life in the 20th century. Anyway, thank you for being on today's program. How about we go over to the Olympia Cafe and we'll have a coffee? Let's do it. <laughs>